Welcome to this month's episode of Short Clip Case Studies, brought to you by Natera Performance Solutions. Hi guys, thanks for watching and of course thanks Alex for having me. In this case study, I will cover a very interesting topic in my opinion, which is the design of heavy strength training for middle distance running. In this case, I, I will focus on the on the strength training program design that I use with the team I consulting with. I mainly work in the as a professor in the Autonomous University of Madrid. Some of you might know some of my research or the app I've been developing, such as my jump to measure performance. But I'm also a strength training consultant. In this case, I've I've been working with with the team of Arturo Martin. This is a very famous coach here in Spain. He's probably the the most successful coach here. Uh, most medals, most records, etc. And over the last, uh, I believe it's, it, it is already eight seasons, we have, been, have, we have been working together in the strength training program design of, of these uh, two guys. We will focus mainly on the two most success, successful guys of these teams, who are Fernando Carro. He owns the he holds the national record in the steeple chase and is the current sub champion in Europe. And Adrian Ben, who is the current uh, Spanish champion, he literally just qualified uh, for the Olympics yesterday. Uh, he won the, the the national championships here in the trials, and um, he got the the ticket to Tokyo. Actually, both of them have the 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 ticket to to Tokyo Olympics. So, why? Uh, I am so um, willing to use um, heavy loads in the design of these distance runners because um, I've seen many times, at least here in Spain, that just because these are uh, endurance uh, athletes, most of the coaches here try to approach the strength training program by using an, a strength endurance uh, program. You know, a lot of repetitions, low loads, etc. In my case, I use a heavy strength training program design that is uh, probably most likely to a powerlifting uh, uh, program that a traditional endurance uh, strength training program. So I will explain why I why I want to use this this kind of of approach. So basically. When we design the strength training for, for these kind of athletes, we want first to improve running economy, which is everything in this sport, and second, to prevent injuries. So first of all, we need to understand that, that every single movement in life is the combination, the interaction between the internal force the athlete is able to, to produce and the external force of the system, be it the own body mass, which is the case in running, or an external load like a barbell. So the movement we produce is described by the very uh, the very famous uh, force velocity relationship, which which is probably the most famous principle in exercise physiology, and it tells us that the higher the force we produce, the lower the velocity of the muscle contraction and vice versa. So as a corollary, if I want to produce the maximal amount of force, I need to use loads and movements that are intentionally slow. So this is the first case why I use uh, heavy strength training because I want to produce high levels of force. This is of course the case and very important for weightlifting, of course for for maximum sprints, but also for middle distance uh, running. So let's start with the focus on improving running economy. As you know, while we are running, we uh, are producing a ground reaction force in each step and we need to use that ground reaction force to counteract with the body weight and the resistance of uh, the wind. And it is known that the increase in ground, ground reaction force during running is associated with uh, increases in speed. So the higher the speed, the speed, the higher the, the, the force, in this case, in this graph is the vertical force I need to apply onto the ground. 
And another biomechanical concept very important in the area of improving running economy is the stiffness. It is a measure of how reactive the tendons are. So uh, it is based in the spring mass model, which is a biomechanical model that considers that the body, the body is a mass that compresses a spring. And when this, this spring is released, the motion, in this case, the, the, the run, is assisted by the stored elastic energy, which means that the athlete can save a bit of energy in each step because he is assisted or she is assisted by this elastic energy. So if we want to uh, increase running economy, a good uh, idea is to increase stiffness. I will show you this, this video by Dairon Robles with the greatest stiffness I have ever seen in that ankle. Look, that's amazing when, when he lands. It's amazing the, the great stiffness he has. Wow. So it is known that the higher the, the leg stiffness, the lower the VO2 con, con, consumed during a submaximal running. So lower VO2 consum, consumption implies better economy because if the athlete is able to consume less, he is able to save that energy, that oxygen, to be able to run faster at a certain moment and to maybe win the race. So uh, it is known that elite athletes consume way less energy than amateur athletes. So running economy is very important because, because it allows us to run at the same speed with lower effort or to run with the same effort but a higher speed. It is also very important to understand that, that stiffness is so important that actually having too little stiffness and too many flexibility is detrimental to, to, to running performance. For example, in our case, in our team, we have observed that the higher the leg stiffness, the, the lower the time to cover the 10K. In this case, we observed that the guys with the lower time to cover the 10K has the, the greatest uh, leg stiffness. And this is everything in distance running, as you know. So how to improve stiffness? Uh, well, uh, it is ha it is uh, clear now that human tendon do adapt in response to exercise to mechanical loading, and actually that adaptations are higher when the loads are high. So the higher the the load, the load, the the higher the adapt the adaptation on, of the tendon. So if we want thick, stiff tendons, we need to to use heavy loads or even isometric loads, because as I say, the higher the, the force, the lower the velocity. So at zero velocity, theoretically, we are producing the highest amount of force in a concentric way. Well, well not concentric because that's actually isometric. So when we design a strength training for running, we need to focus on that increasing leg stiffness, increasing force application, and of course, increasing rate of force development. And all of that will lead to improve running economy. For example, we observed in this meta-analysis that, that we conducted a while ago, that 100% uh, of the studies included in the literature that have analyzed the effect of strength training on running economy, the athletes improved that running economy after doing that strength training program, which consisted uh, in every case in two to three sessions per week, the use of moderate to heavy loads and multi-joint exercises. So let's talk now a bit of sprints biomechanics, a very simple slide. You know that when we run uh, or when we sprint and if we want to sprint forward, we are going to apply forces in the three axes of the space, right? So why sprinting is so important for these events? Because in a certain moment, the athlete might need a great acceleration capability. See Fernando here do, do, doing a great sprint in the last part of the race to become national champion. It's very important to be able to sprint at a certain time. So developing the ability to create maximum acceleration, acceleration is 
important, of course, in this kind of, of athletes. So by definition, if we want to accelerate in a linear sprint, it implies to produce proportionally higher amounts of horizontal force. Because, you know, force is mass times acceleration. So the mass is the same during a run. The athlete doesn't lose mass. And if he accelerates, by definition, he is producing more force in that axis. So how do we train to increase the horizontal force? Well, of course, you know that uh, from many research of, of the team of J.V. Morin and uh, people from his team and other parts of the world. Uh, it is well known that doing this kind of heavy sleds, in this case, we are using uh, sleds uh, approximately to from 70 to 90% of the body weight. And it has been shown that this kind of uh, training is probably better to increase that acceleration capability in in the first uh, meters of uh, an, uh, an accelerative sprint. So this, this is about running economy. So let's move to injury prevention. In this case, I will just show you this, this slide. This slide shows uh, a very important meta-analysis in our field that uh, conclude that uh, after analyzing every study, including an exercise intervention to prevent injury, the most effective type of exercise was a strength training. So uh, this is very important in my opinion. The coach said, uh, Arturo Martin said that uh, he believes that most of the success of, of this team is not only the program design of the, of, of, of the endurance uh, training or the strength training, but the ability to be able to train in a consistent way without wasting time during, uh, uh, during periods of injury. Uh, we have been lucky enough to not get many injuries over the, over the years, uh, not uh, serious injuries uh, for sure. And uh, that's very important in our opinion. It's not, it's not only about increasing performance or increasing running economy. It's also about being able to create safe athletes that are able to get injuries in a uh, in a lesser uh, you know in le less time or less less times during the um, the season. So if we are going to to improve those areas to increase running economy, we, we want to increase stiffness, force application, rate of force development. How do we do that? Well, we need a neuromuscular stimulus. It means high loads, low reps, maximum intentional velocity, multi-joint exercise, who, uh, which develops uh, triple extension. And it's better than the strength endurance uh, classical training, in my opinion, because it interferes less with endurance training. It creates less peripheral fatigue. It increases to a greater extent uh, to a greater extent power, stiffness, and it's more likely to improve by training something that you have not trained before. And in this case, it is not very common that uh, endurance athletes do powerlifting style uh, strength training. So, for example, it has been shown that do, doing uh, a strength endurance uh, training is antagonic and interferes with the uh, endurance running training, while maximum explosive strength do not interfere because the adaptations are uh, different. The endurance training uh, is more peripheral, the strength training is more mm, neural, more central. Uh, so the solution for, for this, in my opinion, is to use high loads, low repetition at a moderate frequency and in separate sessions. So what do we do basically? Well. Nothing, nothing fancy, nothing strange, just good old basic uh, strength training exercise. We use uh, parallel squats, deep squats, lunge, uh, hip thrusts, uh, deadlifts, uh, sumo variations, Romanian, stiff leg variations, etc. We do heavy 
uh, sleds. For example, this guy is one of our team. He's actually running today for his last chance to qualify for the Olympics. Um, this is from from two weeks. Um, he was using 90% of the of the body weight. So this is one example. This is actually what we did the week prior to the Spanish uh, Spanish uh, Olympic trials. We did in Monday a uh, deep squat uh, with uh, 80% approximately of the one repetition maximum and using and leaving leaving two repetitions in reserve. Then the same with the hip thrust and then we did three sets of 15 meters with 90% of the body weight in the with, with the sleds. And the Wednesday we did deadlifts, isometric leg presses and reactive uh, drop jumps. So uh, we also do some strength testing to, to see if, if things are doing well. We use the counter movement jump, not only because it's very simple and gives, a, gives us a measure of, of neuromuscular power, but also because we have observed in, in different studies that it is a great measure of, of readiness to compete. For example, in this, in this study with these same athletes, we analyzed it over the uh, complete year the the evolution of the counter movement jump we measured it every week over one year and we observed that when the athletes competed the 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 best when they did the season best their counter movement jump of that week was like almost 10 percent above average so that's uh, with the CMJ. We also do individual load velocity profiling. You know, measuring movement velocity um, in the in the squat exercise and in the depth lift to estimate the one repetition maximum and to and to understand what is the loads that we better need to use in in the strength training programs. We combine that with the perceived exertion rates. Uh, like the rate of, uh, of repetitions in reserve. I like it very much because it's a very simple way to to adjust and to individualize loads. For example, with the barbell velocity, we estimate the one repetition maximum of that guy that day. And then we ask him to uh, use that load and complete as many repetitions as he can. But leaving the number of repetitions in reserve that we are programming. So I'm we are using that with my jump lab. It's a, an app that I I developed over the years and uh, some of you might might know this these apps I've been developing over the years. This is my last one is uh, an app that includes all the apps I have been developing, like my jump, my lift, rheumatics, etc. It's a free app, and it costs three ninety nine per month, twenty nine ninety nine per year to unlock all the tests, etc. Or ninety nine ninety nine forever. And basically, that's that's some of the tests we we did with with the guys. In the left is a, an actual athlete of that team with a vertical jump in the right is a power lifter that I'm I'm consulting to so this is a very simple uh, methodology you just record a video that just analyze the start and end of the movement and you get the estimate of the one repetition maximum or the uh, jump height so our main results have been this sorry the this went out the full screen basically no severe injuries over the season and we have been doing this for eight to nine seasons in a row a greater increase in neuromuscular performance for example some of these guys went from 30 centimeters in the counter movement jump when we started to 45 centimeters a massive increase and the main goal has been achieved uh, two tickets to Tokyo and one medal, gold medal in the Spanish trials. And very important in my opinion, we 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 got athletes buying. They love to do this kind of heavy strength training. So that was everything from my side. I hope you enjoyed that. 
And if you want to 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 reach me or contact for for more details, this is my contact information, my email and my Twitter and Instagram accounts. So uh, looking forward to hear from you and thank you very much.